good morning, brothers and sisters. Pastor Steve here. Hope you had a great weekend worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were not able to be in church Sunday, uh, go to our website or uh, and, and, and watch our service from this past Sunday here at First Baptist. You can also find the sermon on our YouTube channel and other social media platforms. Well, this morning, we are in chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, and... Um, what I want to focus on, and there's a lot in this chapter. I could, because I love to teach, I could get bogged down and be here for 20 minutes, but I won't. I won't do that. I promise. I want to focus on the first three verses. Now they're so encouraging. Paul says, uh, starting at verse one, are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, as some, letters of commendation to you or from you? You are our letter. You are our letter, written in our hearts known and read by all men, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Um, I love that. Now, it starts off a little bit negative because you remember Paul had planted this church and yet (laughs) <laughs> uh, some of them were attacking him and so on. So he said, he said, guys, do I need recommendation letters from others to you? Like some of the other people want, you know, they want you to give them letters of recommendation so you can boost their ministry. Do I need that from you guys? No, no. He said, the truth is you're my letter. You're my letter. Not written on tablets of stone. It's not like the law of the Old Testament God gave Moses, you know, at Mount Sinai. One of my heart. He said, if, if someone wants a letter of recommendation about me and my ministry, Paul says, it's you. You, the people of God, the people, the churches that I've planted, the people who have been saved, the people that have been you know, influenced under my ministry. He said, you are the letter of recommendation for me and my ministry. And I thought, wow, wow. I remember many years ago, Many years ago, there was a church reached out to me about uh, asking if I would consider, you know, uh, their vacant pulpit being being their pastor. And I don't remember the exact question. But one of the questions they asked was something about, uh, I don't. It, it wasn't what was I most proud of or feel best. It's something along the lines of of that. It, this, this is the wrong wording, but it's the idea. Of what did I really feel good about my ministry? You know, when I looked at First Baptist, what God, you know, what was I proud of or what stood? I don't. Whatever the question was, I, what I remember is the answer. Um, and as I thought about the question, my, my answer was it, it, it was the people. It was the changed lives. When I look out and I see people who are here spiritually, and having been here a long time, you 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 can see this more easily, but I see people who are here. And I can remember a time in their life when they were way over here. And when I, when I see people who've moved from here to here, it makes it all worth it. That's that's the joy of ministry, is seeing people grow and change, of seeing lives impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're a Sunday school leader, you work in children's ministry, youth ministry, uh, you you. Facilitate a D group. Celebrate those those victories. Celebrate that growth. Celebrate the people. That's the blessing of it, brothers. That's the blessing of it. Short and simple today. Just want to share that with you. I'll see you tomorrow.